Oh my god, do I have a story for you today. What's up you guys, welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be sharing with you what my sister did to me while I was in New York last week. Well, I don't know when you're watching this video. It happened very recently. So if you are new here, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison. I will leave more information about my journey and my story in the description box down below. Also, my analytics tell me that 40% of you watching my channel are not subscribed. I would like to know why. <laughs> if you are not subscribed, um, hit the thing. Click the thing and the bell so you can watch all of this shit show that is me. <laughs> if you wanna follow me on any other social media platforms, that's always linked in the description box down below or it'll pop up on screen or something. So, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So if you were following me on Patreon, you already know that like eight or nine months ago, maybe more, I blocked my sister. For the sake of this video, we will call her Voldemort. <laughs> I'm just in a mood today. I don't know, guys. I'm in a mood. So Voldemort. <laughs> so the sister that shall not be named and I have always had problems. She does not like me. She's never like straight out the womb hated me. Okay. And it's always been tense. And for a long time in my adult life, I have always made excuses for why she treats me like shit. Just to keep it completely real. I've always made a lot of excuses. Like she had a bad day or her boyfriend broke up with her. It's okay that she is saying these things to me because she is having a rough time or whatever. I've tried to be really patient with her in the past, but to be fair, my temper goes from zero to prison real freaking quick, okay? And there are certain people that can just bring that out of me. She's one of those people. We have always had bad blood and that's just, it is what it is. So last year while I was visiting my family in New York, which I go every year, we had our last falling out and she had just lost her job. So I made excuses for her. I'm like, oh, she lost her job. Like she's in a bad mood or whatever, whatever. So I was making excuses for her throwing just jabs, like unnecessary jabs at me, you know? And that sucks, but we had a falling out over my bachelor degree. So she's a mechanic and that is so freaking awesome. I think she's so badass. I just learned a week ago how to change the oil from a YouTube video and my friend's husband changing my oil and I'm like, whoa, cool, that's how you do it. Side note, a lot of oil comes out of your car, so completely irrelevant to the story. But I, I don't know how to fix cars. I can't even build Ikea furniture, or Amazon furniture. I can't build stuff. In Woodshop, I had to hire somebody to build a birdhouse for me so I didn't fail, okay? Like my brain does not work that way, so I've always thought that it's absolutely incredible. The first car my sister ever owned, she built herself from like wheels up, the frame up, See, I don't know, but she's a freaking, that's badass. I mean, that's amazing, right? I would never ever say anything about that, that negative, because I think it's fucking awesome. My brain doesn't work that way. So I'm always like, whoa, you can change a tire. <laughs> I'm always like impressed with things like that because I can't do those things, right? She got really crappy with me about my bachelor's degree and how I'm so stupid for spending a bunch of money on a degree that doesn't matter and blah, blah, blah. I have my bachelor's degree in psychology and correctional program support services. That is important to me. That's how my brain works, right? And the whole time I was getting it, she was really crappy about it and just made snide comments on me wasting time and money and whatever. And I always let it go. Well, she became increasingly more toxic and aggressive towards me, the more successful I became. Now I'm not Kylie Jenner, I'm not like a millionaire or anything. I'm not, like I, I do okay, you know? But you could tell she got increasingly more and more jealous and insecure and I always tried to like counterbalance that with trying to be a cheerleader for her. Now of course there's two sides to it. Maybe I made her feel some type of way or whatever but she would always bring up my past and she still does it to this day. She's actually friends with Steve, my now ex-husband. I'm officially divorced by the way. She hangs out with him and they talk shit about me together and it's super weird. And I decided eight months ago to no longer be in her life. And I blocked her on all my social media platforms because toxic is toxic. And we'll get to that at the end. 
stay tuned. I go back to New York to help get someone into treatment and our younger sister, Gretchen, was like, please just put that aside. Please have lunch with us and the kids. She's got three kids, beautiful kids. I love those kids. So I'm like, fine. <laughs> I'll have lunch and I want to see the kids and I want to see you, Gretchen, not the one that shall not be named Voldemort. <laughs> so I agreed to go even though I didn't want to go. We're supposed to meet at 1. Well, at noon, Gretchen sends me all these messages like we don't know where we're meeting or where we're going and I'm like, ah. So I call and I'm like, do you want to have lunch or not? And Voldemort says that I've always been a stuck up two-faced C word. See you next Tuesday. And I was just like, wow, that's aggressive. I'm not even at the lunch table yet and you're already calling me fucked up names, like, what? So I was like, dang, 7 a.m., <laughs> calm down. Anyway, eventually Gretchen was able to calm Voldemort down. <laughs> she eventually calmed down. I'm like, fine, I'll still go to lunch with you. I shouldn't have gone. I, I really shouldn't have gone, but whatever, I went. So I show up to lunch, and as soon as I pull into the parking lot of this restaurant that we're going to, I'm like, bad vibe. <laughs> Like, I already feel stressed to the max. I already feel like I should not be here. I'm like, eh, you should just drive away. Even though they saw you pull in, just be weird and just go. But I stood there like the awkward duck that I am and went inside the restaurant with them. It's tense. The sister that shall not be named always makes horrible comments. She calls our mother Susan and she knows that that bothers me. Like, she's your mom, you came out of her, like, stop. So I was letting those comments go and I was trying really hard to like play with the kids and like talk to them and talk to Gretchen and I was trying to just completely ignore the sister that shall not be named because I don't want, I don't want to fight with her in front of her kids, right? Well, the baby started to get tired and they started to get cranky and it's the end of the day. So I told her, I said, I'll get the check. Don't worry about that. Why don't you just take the babies and go? We'll ask for boxes because the restaurant that we were eating at was kind of slow anyway. So I'm like, I'll get all the boxes. We'll pack everything up and I can take Gretchen back. We'll bring the leftovers. We'll bring the food. So none of this goes to waste and I'll get the tab. I didn't want her to feel pressured to stay there. So I made sure that she knew like, you don't have to stay here. Like it's okay to, to leave. I'm not going to feel any type of way. I understand that the kids are tired and they want to go. Don't even stress it, girl. Don't stress the check. Don't stress leaving. Don't stress any of it. I got you. And she snapped at me about wanting to find out where she lived because I was just going to pick up our other sister from her house days before and the sister that shall not be named was not trying to let me come to her house, which I just thought was so weird, right? I didn't even think about it at the restaurant when I offered to get the tab and the boxes and all that stuff. So she snapped at me and I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. I'm going to grab the check and I'll see you next year. <laughs> with zero intention of seeing her next year. Well, I get up and leave, she storms out and it just was so crappy. So she stormed out and my other sister and I sat down at the table and I let my sister know like, this is not your fault. It's always been this way between her and I. If you ever need anything, let me know. Cause Gretchen's 18 years old and she's new to the family. And I just want her to know like, I'm sorry that they went this way. I knew it was gonna go this way. It never is good between us. And I'm just sorry that I'm sorry that we couldn't have a nice lunch together. So I wrap it up with Gretchen. By the way, I miss you girl, love you, I'll call you later. And we walked outside to which, as soon as I walked outside, there was a circle carved into my door panel by a key. And I'm standing there and I knew it wasn't there when I went into the restaurant because I specifically remember like turning and locking the car and like looking at my car. It was so big and obvious that like, as soon as I came out, I spotted it immediately. And I was just like standing there frozen. I don't even know what to say. I'm just like, in my heart and soul, I know that my sister did it. I'm sitting there and I'm like frozen for a second. And I see that she's still waiting in her car, obviously, cause she's waiting for our other little sister to come out. I walk up to her window and I said, did you just fucking key my car? <laughs> Almost smiling in disbelief because like, no way, like you keyed my car. I'm 31, so she's 28. You're 28 years old, you're a mother, and you keyed my car. Like, why would you do that to me? Over what? What did I do to upset you so bad that you freaking keyed my brand new car? Like, I've never owned a nice car, ever. I've, I've always driven hoopties. I shifted my last car with a screwdriver. This is the nicest car I've ever owned, and you freaking took your key and carved a circle into it? So she looks me dead in the face and goes, why would I key your car? What? Like, I'm expecting her to be like, what? Oh my God, let me help you figure it out. Maybe there's cameras, like, oh, what happened? Like, I was expecting something else besides, why would I key your car? Like, emotionless, stone-faced. Like, clearly she keyed the freaking car, you know? So I said, maybe they have cameras out back. 
So I, I go and I look and I'm like, maybe they've got cameras and I can try to do some investigating and see who the frick scratched my car. Like, I can't believe this really happened. And my sister gets out of her car. She licks her finger and starts scrubbing the door panel. And I'm like, Hleh! I'm a Virgo, man. And she just licked my car door. Not like a lick, like, you know what I mean? So now I have saliva and a really deep gash in my door panel and I'm just sitting there in complete disbelief. Ew, you just got, you spit on my car. Like, ew, why would you do it? Why? And she looks at me and she's like, you know YouTube? I know cars, you can just buff that right out. And I'm just standing here like, that's not the point. Like you keyed my brand new car. So I'm just thinking like, what the fuck did I do to deserve this? Like, I can't, why would I come to lunch? I can't believe that I even came here. Like you keyed my car. I know that I can fix the door and I've mostly buffed it out. But the point is like, you keyed my car. Why would a grown ass woman do that to another woman? And I'm just sitting here like, heartbroken and upset and confused. And like, how did it go so wrong? Like, I'm sorry that I was born. <laughs> So I get in the car and I drive away and I call Reese and I'm like, bleh, like crying. And I'm like, I can't believe she fucking did that. Like, it's so shitty. Like, I can't believe we can't even have a nice lunch together. But it just reaffirms the fact that I was right in my decision to block her because toxic is toxic. And that is the whole point in making this video. Even if they are family, if they disrupt your mental health and your peace and they're toxic and they drain your will to live every time you see them, you don't need them in your life. You matter, your mental health matters. Toxic is toxic. I was told my whole life that blood is thicker than water and family is family. And I can tell you right now that some people don't deserve to be part of my life. And I'm not saying that because, oh, I'm so whatever. They don't deserve a seat at the table near me because they're so awful to me. She treats me like crap every time that we're near each other. She talks crap about me on a daily basis. She's friends with my ex-boyfriend and they just sit around and talk about me. And it's like, that's so toxic. So I have just learned in my life that I, I know that I do not deserve that. I know that I did nothing to deserve how she treats me. And for a long time, I thought it was my fault because I was an addict and I was never around her and, and I wasn't a good sister to her. So I spent, you know, years, almost 10 years trying to make up for it. And we are where we are and it just has not gotten better. And it sucks because I really wanted a relationship with her as I do all of my siblings, which I'm so grateful to have a great relationship with the rest of my family. But like, it's so hard knowing that like, I can't fix this knowing that no matter what I do, she will always be so shitty to me. I'm just glad that this encounter did not end in a physical altercation, like it almost has in the past, or like it has in the past, you know? Um, going back to New York while I was on supervision was very difficult because I was always so scared that like, we were going to get into physical altercation. So I'm just glad that that didn't happen because I can't handle another charge. <laughs> that would suck, but yeah. Toxic is toxic, and if you need to block somebody to protect your mental health, girl, you block that person. And don't let other people make you feel bad about that decision. Don't let other people tell you what you need to do. Your mental health matters, your peace matters. So I'm gonna end today's video here. I love you guys, stay safe, stay sober, protect your inner peace, and I will see you in my next one.